If you are taking a praxis exam, well, you're likely to encounter a question about trigonometry on the math section. Now, this is not the case in every single praxis exam, but of course, there is many exams out there that you need to know a lot of math. So what I'm going to show you here in just one second is a trigonometry math question that you should be able to uh, answer if you are fully prepared for exams like 5165. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And I myself have taken uh, many praxis exams. And I can tell you right now, as someone who has a degree in mathematics, you need to study for these exams. So I'm going to thoroughly go over this uh, question about trigonometry in just one second. But I want to tell you that I have a fantastic uh, praxis math test course series. So I break this down in terms of test code. You'll find links to all these uh, test prep courses in the description of this video. But if you need help in terms of studying or relearning mathematics, my courses will really help you out. So let's take a look at this question right now. So let me go and read the problem, and then of course we'll discuss its solution here in just one second. It says, let negative uh, 3, 4 be a point on the terminal side of theta. Now theta is some angle. Find the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. Now, if you are looking at the problem, you're like, well, I don't even know what the terminal side means. I don't even understand the question. Well, let's kind of set this up. Now, if uh, some of you out there know about the sine, cosine, and tangent, maybe from your study of basic trigonometry, we call these trigonometric ratios. Well, if you have a basic understanding of the sine, cosine, and tangent, well, then you'll definitely be able to understand this problem. Okay, but let's go ahead and take a look at uh, kind of graphically what's going on here. So we have this point, negative 3, uh, 4. Okay, of course, it's a point on the terminal side of an angle. All right, so let's just go ahead and plot this point, negative 3, 4, on the xy plane. Okay, so what angle are we talking about here? Are we talking about like this angle right here or maybe some other angle right there? Well, we need to know a thing or two about this part right here, terminal side. So what are we talking about? What is this terminal side business? Well, let's go down here and take a look at what we're talking about. Okay, so really the setup is this. So this point, negative 3, 4, is on the terminal side of this angle. Now you can see that kind of in blue, hopefully. Now this is what we call an angle in standard position. All right, so standard position. So an angle in standard posi uh, position in trigonometry always starts on the, uh, the initial, we call this the initial side. It's on the positive x-axis. And then you're going to be going counterclockwise, and then you're going to stop at some uh, angle, right? So basically, your angle is being formed from here, and you're just kind of going this way. And this problem is saying that the terminal side, now the terminal side is this side. This would be the terminal side, and we would call this the initial side. So the problem is saying, that the terminal side goes through the point negative three, four. Okay, so terminal side, you're thinking, oh, this angle is in standard position, so it's starting from here to here. Okay, so basically this is the question. We want to find uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle here. Okay, all right, so this is what these basic concepts uh, mean. Uh, or at least basic terminology, excuse me. This is the terminal side, initial side, and an angle in standard position. Now, there is another thing here that we need to discuss, and I'll just bring it up now, and then I'll emphasize it here in a second, um, and that is this. Here, this angle right in here, okay? I'll just uh, uh, I'll show you. Uh, let's just give it a name. Let's call it... Uh, we'll call it the reference angle, okay? I'll just call it angle R, and I just uh, described it as the reference angle. So the reference angle is the angle that goes from the terminal side down to the uh, x-axis, okay? And basically, uh, when you have angles that are larger than 90 degrees, like this angle here, this is an obviously uh, larger than 90 degrees, we can find the sine... Uh, cosine 
and tangent of this reference angle right here, okay, again, it's the angle that's being formed from the terminal side to the x-axis, we can find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this reference angle. It would be the same as finding the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. Okay, that's a very, very important uh, concept in trigonometry. So if you're with me, you're like, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, keep going. I understand what you're saying. So let's go ahead and actually start putting the pieces of this puzzle together. All right, so here's the situation. We have our angle, okay, so it's in standard position. So here is the terminal side. It's going to the point negative three, four. So this is an ordered pair, right? So it's just x, y. So the x coordinate is negative three and the y is four. So you can kind of see that here, uh, negative three on the x, four on the y axis. So this is the point uh, negative three, four. So we're basically, we're forming a right triangle here. Okay, now here is the terminal side. And the way we uh, find angles or find trigonometric ratios when you have the terminal side is you always drop down to the x-axis. Okay, so in other words, if you're um, angle, uh, let me just go up here because I don't want to mess up this figure so much. But let's suppose your terminal side went to, uh, let me use a different color here. This is very important. Let's suppose your angle went all the way like so. Okay, so a big uh, angle right there. So it's in standard position. So it started with the initial side and you went all the way out like this. So your terminal side would be right there. Okay, so what is the reference angle? Well, you always go from the terminal side to the x axis, not to the y axis. This is a big mistake that a lot of trigon uh, trigonometry students make. They form their right triangle sometimes. They'll be like, okay, I need to make a right triangle. And they'll go this way to the y axis. That's a no no. Okay. You need to go to the x axis. And you, now you have a nice little right triangle. Okay. And the objective is, is to get the values of each one of the sides of the right triangle. And then uh, with those three pieces of information, you can find the trigonometric ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. But just remember, you're always going to go from the terminal side to the x-axis. All right, so now let's go down here. And I drop down to the x-axis. So I've got my lovely little right triangle. And I know that right in here, matter of fact, I'll just uh, show this right here, this angle is my reference angle, okay? So I'm like, all right, so basically if I find the sine, uh, cosine, and tangent of this angle, it's going to just answer the question for the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle, okay? All right, so if you're with me, that's outstanding. Now let's continue to proceed. All right, now here, I have a right triangle. This is negative three, this is four. And you can see this is labeled as R. And we just call this the radius, okay? Which of course is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So we're gonna need this side. And hopefully you can say, well, just can't we use the Pythagorean theorem? You absolutely can, all right? So that's what we're gonna be doing. But when you use the Pythagorean theorem, uh, with this notation, you know, of course, we're uh, in a little bit more advanced level mathematics, trigonometry. It's x squared plus y squared, which are the x and y coordinates, is equal to the radius squared. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for r. So here we have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we'll put in our x and y coordinates, and we'll do all this uh, lovely number crunching. So r is going to be equal to, of course, you know, we're just going to take the square root of both sides. So r is going to be equal to... Uh, negative three squared, which of course is our x coordinate, which is going to be positive nine plus uh, four squared, which is our y coordinate, which is 16, nine plus 16 is 25. So the square root of 25 is five and r will always be positive. Okay, r is always going to be positive. So now we have a nice lovely situation here to answer the question. Okay, so here we go. Here's our triangle, our right triangle. We have negative three here four here and five here. Now, this is a right triangle and the signs matter big time, okay? In other words, you could see on the y-axis, this is po uh, positive. R is always positive, the radius or the hypotenuse, but your x and y values can be positive and negative. You need to include those signs. Here, we're talking about negative three. That's very, very important. You can't just say this is a three, four, five uh, right triangle. It's negative three here, four and five. Okay, so, 
if you're with me, you're like, okay, I understand. So now let's go back and review some basic uh, stuff from uh, right angle trigonometry. Again, you learn this, uh, you know, early on, like in uh, geometry. So here we got so Sokotoa, right? Our good old saying that your great great grandparents uh, learned. So the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? The cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So looking at this angle right here, okay, this is the angle that we want, the one in question, but now let's just kind of focus in on the reference angle, this angle right here, okay? This is our reference angle. So let's uh, take the sine, okay? Now the sine is equal to y over r. This is the same thing as opposite over the adjacent for the reference angle. What's the opposite uh, side when you're looking at this angle? It would be four, okay, or the y-axis, or sorry, the y-coordinate, okay, and it's going to be uh, the opposite over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is now the radius, so you got y over r, and you can just follow this through with the cosine, x over r, and tangent is going to be y over x, and just corresponds to these right here. All right, so here, this is um, our x-coordinate, this is our y-coordinate, and here is our r, so we're just going to go ahead and use these definitions of these trigonometric ratios uh, to answer the question. And really, this just becomes a simple exercise in putting in values. Okay, so x is negative 3. Okay, remember, we're going back to our lovely little triangle here, right? Y is uh, 4 and R is 5. And here we have the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. When you take actual full trigonometry, you're going to be given... Uh, the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent uh, using y's and r's and x's. Okay, you're not going to be seeing opposite over adjacent. In the beginning, you will, but later on, you'll be using this notation. All right, so basically, we're simply just going to plug in the values. What's y? Uh, let's uh, find sine. So y is 4 and r is 5. So sine is 4 over 5, right? Trigonometric ratio, right? We're comparing two different sides of this angle. Uh, and the question is not what is the angle. We just want to know what the sine, cosine, and tangent is. So the cosine is going to be x over r. x is negative 3. And r, of course, is 5. And the tangent of this angle is y over x. y is 4. And x is negative 3. Again, these signs matter. Okay, now there's more I can teach about uh, these basic uh, concepts, which are essential uh, that you understand in trigonometry. But uh, I'll just kind of like, you know, stop my excitement because I have a tendency just to keep going, 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 because math is just interconnected. I really uh, want to make sure that you have a full grasp on all the things you need to know. But really, uh, what you need to do is get into a good course of instruction especially if you're at this level of mathematics, okay? You can't be like, oh, I'll learn a little bit here, learn a little bit there. It's not going to work. What I've learned in life is this. If you really want to do something well, truly, truly want to do something well, in other words, if you truly want to be excellent in mathematics, it's going to require a full commitment, okay? If you make a full commitment, that means you can just go all in. I'm going to do all the work, study as hard as I can, ask all the questions I can, look for the best instruction I can. If you do that, even if you're, uh, struggling in math, you're going to be very, very successful. So anytime you're not getting the results that you're getting in anything in life, just take a look at your commitment level, okay? And that's the good starting point. That's matter of fact, that is the starting point, all right? If you're not fully committed to learning mathematics, well, unless you are a protege or just, you know, a natural genius, even then there's still just a lot of information to uh, kind of take in. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now remember, there is a lot of math on these Praxis exams. So make sure to check out my test prep courses. You can find links to all of these in the description. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.